Chapter 10 Ye Shall Receive Power Holy Spirit Exposition When I am weak, then am I strong, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 10, this is Paul's testimony. When he realized he had no strength in himself, then he turned to the Lord for his support. All the work accomplished in and through the Christian is achieved by the power of the Holy Spirit. Before the Lord left his disciples to return into heaven, he promised them that they would receive power. Acts 1 verse 8, he was referring to the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost when he would empower the disciples to witness and live for the Lord. This age, called the Church Age, is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. He is the prominent person of the Trinity during the temporary, physical absence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us consider the work of the Spirit in the world, the believer, and in the church. In the world, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. John 16 verse 8, he convicts the sinner and leads him to repentance and faith in the Lord for salvation. Peter reminds us in 1 Peter 1 verse 12 that it is the Holy Spirit who empowers the preacher to proclaim the gospel. Again, Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 5 that the gospel came not in word only but in the power and with much assurance of the Holy Spirit. Consider the work of the Spirit in the believer. He saves us by regeneration and the renewing ministry in the believer. Titus 3 verse 5, the Spirit leads the believer into an intimate relationship, enabling us to cry, Abba Father Galatians 4 verse 6, the Spirit also removes the bondage of fear and introduces the status of adoption Romans 8 verse 15, finally, the work of the Spirit in the church. The Spirit indwells both the believer and the church. They are the temples of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16. The Spirit provides and develops the spiritual gifts in the church. He equips and sends missionaries into the world. Acts 13.2-4 Outlines The Holy Spirit's Relationships to the Unbeliever and Believer Aya the Holy Spirit and the Unbeliever 1. Resisted by Unbelief AC 751 2. Ignored by Ritualism Chose Law over Grace, Hebrews 10 verse 29 3. Blasphemed by Rationalism. Matt. 12 28 32. 4. Tempted by Deception. Acts. 5 1 9. 5. Reproves the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. John. 16 8. 2. The Holy Spirit and the Believer. 1. Convicts of Sin. He will reprove the world of sin John. 16,8. 2. Sets apart for salvation. The sanctification of the Spirit. 1 Peter 1,2. 3. Regenerates through the Word. Born again. 1 Peter 1,23. For the seals with that Holy Spirit of promise Ephesians 1 verse 13. 1. The seal is the earnest of our inheritance. Ephesians 1 verse 14. 5. Sons have, the spirit of his son, crying, Abba, Father Galatians 4 verse 6. 6. The spirit of truth reveals Christ who is the truth. John. 14 colon 16, 17. 7. The indwelling spirit will give life to our mortal bodies. Romans 8 verse 11. 8. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit. Assurance, Romans 8 verse 16. 9. Intercedes in our prayers, He helps us and makes intercession. Romans 8 verse 26. 10. Those who are led by the Spirit, are the sons of God, Romans 8 verse 14. 11. Prepares us for service. 1. Calls to service. Barnabas and Saul, Acts. 13 colon 2. 2. Guides in service. The Spirit suffered them not acts. 16 colon 7. 3. Empowers for service. Ye shall receive power. Acts. 1 colon 8. Growth, spiritual. Heb 5, 11 to 14, 1 Peter point 2, 1 to 3, 
2 Peter.3, 18, Key Verses on Spiritual Maturity. 1. A command, not an option. Grow. 2 Peter.3, 18. 2. The provision. Milk slash meat of the word. Grace. 3. The requisite. Lay aside. Knowledge of our Lord. 4. The goal. To him is glory both now and forever. Amen. 5. Maturity is essential for spiritual discernment. Hebrews 5 verses 13 and 14. 6. Retarded spiritual growth is inexcusable. I traits of immaturity, see, 1 Corinthians 3 verses 1 to 4. 1. Carnal Christians are spiritually retarded. They act like natural men. 3. 1. The first symptom is the works of the flesh. Galatians 5 verse 19. 2. Three classes, natural, spiritual and carnal. See, 1 CR 2 14 3 colon 1. 2. They are undisciplined and childish in attitude and behavior. 1. Self-centered. They like attention, pampering and entertainment. 2. Selfish. They are reluctant in sharing. Give me, that's mine. 3. Ungrateful. Slow to say, please, and thank you. 4. Combative. Rather quarrel than help. Envy and strife 3. 3. Hero worshippers. I am of Paul, etc., follow the preacher, 1 cr.3 colon 4. 2. Marks of maturity, steady progress, physical and spiritual. 1. From baby talk, to intelligent conversation. 2. From baby food, milk, to solid meat of the word. 3. From stumbling to a steady forward walk slash race. 4. From dependence to responsible activities. 5. Childhood relics are replaced. I put away childish things 1 co.13, 11. 1. From dolls and teddy bears to parental roles, etc. 6. From spectator to participant. 1. Becomes a student of scripture to share, not just spoon-fed. 7. A growing love and appreciation for Christ and God's word. 8. A hatred of sin and love for righteousness. Separation. 9. Sensitive to the will of God. 10. A compelling compassion for the lost. 11. A genuine love for assembly fellowship. 12. A heart in tune for worship. 13. A changed life, new life in Christ. Row 8 2 2 517. 14. A commitment that leads to reproach for Christ. Hebrews 13 verse 13. 15. Examine priorities, weights, and hindrances. Good, better and best. 16. A display of the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 22. 3. Bible examples of spiritual growth. 1. Peter, backslider to preacher. 2. Paul, persecutor to bond slave of Christ. 3. John, son of thunder, to a disciple of love. 4. Thomas, doubter to worshipper. 5. Hannah made a new coat for Samuel each year. 1 Samuel 2 verse 19. 4. Divine provisions for stimulating growth. 1. Good diet, the Bible. Milk and meat of the word, 1 Peter 2 verse 2. 2. Good instructor, the Holy Spirit instructing and guiding. 3. Good instruction, Christ who indwells and intercedes. 4. Good experience, trials and temptations. Romans 5 verses 3 to 5. 5. Good involvement, corporate worship and assembly fellowship. 6. Good occupation, active service. Healthy diet and exercise. V. Lessons from Paul's Nurturing Timothy C. PHP.2, 19-23. 1. Good materials, his mother and grandmother prepared him. 2 Timothy 1 verse 5. 1. Moses got his early training at his mother's knees. 
2. Timothy proved dependable, dead to self and committed. 21. 3. Paul was concerned with both development and accomplishment. 4. Paul created an atmosphere for development. 1. Treated him as a person, friend, son and co-equal. 2. He commended him for progress but avoided flattery. 3. He gave constructive criticism in love as needed. 5. A son-father relationship is built on mutual love, trust, respect, etc. 6. Rejoice when they pass you up and carry the baton. 1. Elevator Christians, lots of activity but no progress. 2. Don't expect mature behavior from youth. 1. Allow them the luxury of a few mistakes, like we had. 2. Development thrives on encouragement, not unnecessary reprimands. 3. When correction is needed, do it in love. 3. Infancy is normal and beautiful but not immaturity or carnality. 4. A final word, grow up. Be men of courage. Strong, 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13. 5. Grow until you reach, the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 13. Seed Thoughts and Sermon Starters. The Spirit, in Galatians chapter 5. 1. All believers live in the Spirit but not all walk in the Spirit Galatians 5 verse 25. 2. To walk in the Spirit assures victory over the flesh. Galatians 5 verse 16. 3. The Spirit and the flesh are in conflict with each other. Galatians 5 verse 17. 4. Being led by the Spirit gives freedom from the law. Galatians 5 verse 18. 5. Liberty in the Spirit makes us free to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 22. 6. To live in the Spirit is unconditional for all believers. Galatians 5 verse 25. 7. To walk and be led by and bear fruit in the Spirit is voluntary and conditional. The Spirit's coming, comfort and companionship. 1. The Spirit's coming was dependent, 1. On Christ's absence. John 16 verse 7. 2. On Christ's ascension. John 14 verse 28. 3. On Christ's advocacy. John 14 verse 16. 2. The Spirit's comfort makes Christ dearer, the Word clearer and heaven nearer. John 16 colon 13 14 15. 3. The Spirit's companionship is in and with the believer. 1. A seal, Ephesians 1 verse 13, 430. 2. An earnest, Ephesians 1 verse 14, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22. 3. A resident, Rom 8 colon 11, 1 Corinthians 6 verses 19 and 20. 4. An anointing, 2 CR.1, 21, 1 John. 2 20. 5. A witness, Romans 8 verse 16, Hebrews 10 verse 15. The Lord's Relationship to the Believer 1. Before to lead and direct us. 2. Behind to encourage and instruct us. 3. Above to watch over and protect us. 4. Beside to befriend and walk with us. 5. Beneath to uphold and sustain us. 6. Within to empower and abide in and with us. The Spirit-Filled Life be filled with the Spirit Ephesians 5 verse 18. 1. It is a command to obey. Be filled with the Spirit. 2. It is a joyful life. Singing and making melody in your heart. Ephesians 5 verse 19. 3. It is a thankful life. Giving thanks. Ephesians 5 verse 20. 4. It is a graceful life. Wives submit, husbands love. Ephesians 5 verses 22 and 25. 5. It is a peaceful life. Fathers provoke not. Ephesians 6 verse 4. 6. It is a profitable life. Nurture children in the admonition of the Lord. 7. It is a powerful life. 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. 8. It is a prayerful life. Praying always with all prayer. Ephesians 6 verse 18. Notes and Quotes Worry is carrying our burden too far. He is the burden bearer and says, I will give you rest. God may take us into his darkroom to develop our character. Those closest to Christ are sure to be drawn closer still. Martha, somewhat perplexed with life, was not entering into intimate communion with the Lord like her sister Mary, yet the chapter is prefaced with the statement, Jesus loved Martha. John 11 verse 5 The obstacles that appear to us as mountains, through the mists of unbelief, are only an occasion for God to display His omnipotent power and infinite love. An unsatisfied heart is a source of danger, and a divided heart is the continual cause of an inconsistent walk. When Christ possesses and engrosses our affections, we are superior to every temptation of the enemy. Meditations Grace and Truth Full of grace and truth, John 1 verse 14 The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9 I am the truth John 14 verse 6 what perfect balance we see in our Lord Jesus. He could stand for truth and yet be gracious. Pray for me. I want to be gracious, but have the temptation to compromise and condone in doing so. I am in danger of forfeiting faithfulness to God for popularity with man. Our blessed Lord said, Neither do I condemn thee, but he also said, Go, and sin no more, he said, Woe unto thee, but he also said, Come unto me, beautiful balance of grace and truth. Let us seek God's grace and power to see this a reality in our lives. Afflictions I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. Psalms 119,75 How can a faithful God allow affliction to come into our lives? It is because he loves us and in the end it will prove to be for our good and for his glory. It sometimes takes a crisis to develop this. There were two secret disciples who had been hiding in the shadows but needed the crisis of Calvary to test their allegiance to the Lord. While the other disciples were still hiding and trembling, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea boldly came out into the dangerous open and begged the body of their Lord to give him a proper burial. God may use a crisis in our lives to reveal a virtue that has been lying dormant for too long. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, after thy will, while I am waiting, yielded and still. Light Afflictions I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans 8 verse 18 I will give her, the valley of Acre for a door of hope, Hosea 2 verse 15. The valley of Acre is the valley of suffering, but also a door of hope, when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, there is no need for fear because we have the assurance that our heavenly shepherd is with us and it is the door of hope into a blessed eternity. We may now be in the valley of Acre, but Paul reminds us the sufferings are only temporal and is nothing to be compared with the glory that will follow. He giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater, he sendeth more strength when the labors increase, to added affliction he addeth his mercy. To multiplied trials, his multiplied peace. His love has no limit, his grace has no measure, his power has no boundary known to men, for out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. Annie Johnson Flint Broken Fellowship I sought him, but I found him not. So, 3 colon 1 Mary and Joseph sought Jesus and found him in the temple, they thought he was lost, but he was right where they left him. If our companionship with him is broken, it is not he who moved, but we. We can't lose our salvation, but we can lose our fellowship. Unconfessed sin breaks fellowship, neglecting our Bible breaks fellowship, neglect of prayer and assembling with God's people breaks fellowship. First, his blood cleanses from all sin, his book teaches us precious truths about him, on our knees we enjoy sweet communion and communication, consistent fellowship in the local church shields us from the attacks of the evil one. Later the bride could say, I found him whom my soul loveth, I held him, and would not let him go. So point three, 
for a blessed reality for the serious believer. Questions and Answers Question David prayed, Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Psalms 51 verse 11, Does this mean the Holy Spirit may depart for the believer today? Answer, In the Old Testament times the Holy Spirit came upon individuals to perform a given task, and then departed. Now in the New Testament times the Holy Spirit comes to reside in the believer forever. The believer today is sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Ephesians 1 verse 13 Ephesians 4 verse 30 This New Testament church age is the dispensation of the Spirit.